Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Wisconsin. Ryan Braun and the Milwaukee Brewers still in the thick of the fight to half game behind Chicago in a tight NL Central race. Meanwhile, the Twins much improved from a year ago. Brian Dozier and his teammates six behind the Cleveland Indians in the AL Central. The Brewers and Twins round one is next. Road trip continues for the Milwaukee Brewers. Target Field, downtown Minneapolis. The annual matchup. Two games here. Two games Wednesday and Thursday between these two clubs at Miller Park and two teams featuring pretty good pitchers again. We're repetitive here, but another good pitching matchup. Urban Santana, five complete games already this season, and Brent Suter has been just outstanding, taking the place of the injured Chase Anderson in the Brewers rotation. Good evening from Target Field alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Matt LePay. We'll hear from Sophia Minnert in just a couple of minutes. Well, Rock, it's no secret the Twins are, are trying to get things turned around with the pitching has been a problem area for a while now Irvin Santana a big key and how about Brent Suter and the performance that he has given the Brewers right now coming into the rotation since Chase Anderson's been out yeah and again one of the big things for uh, Brent Suter is the fact that you know he's only faced one team twice and I think the advantage that he has with the pace that he goes at and the delivery the unorthodox delivery the way he throws hitters off so the more they see him I think the better chance they have of getting a pretty good pitch to hit, but uh, Brent Suit is so far outstanding work when he faces the opponent for the first time. He gave up five runs against the St. Louis Cardinals. They have the only, they're the only team to face him twice. And Urban Santana, he got off to a tremendous start. I mean, April and May, almost unhittable. He's got the, the three shutouts, the five complete games. He's got more complete games than every other team in Major League Baseball. So this should be an interesting one. Neither one of these two guys you know, throw all that hard, but they both command very well. We'll see how it works out here tonight. Another tough assignment for the Brewers facing Urban Santana. Can the crew get the mystery unlocked and get the offense back? Sophia Minard will check in in just a few minutes on that very topic from Target Field. Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lights, the original light beer. By Hupi and Abraham, voted best, rated best. Hupi and Abraham, tell them you mean business. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs.
back and look by a home run for Thames. Ball blasted to left center field. Deep and long gone. The border battle between the Brewers and the Twins is renewed this week. A look at Eric Thames, his 25 home runs, eighth best in the National League and Domingo Santana is back in the Brewers lineup. He was hit by a pitch yesterday by Chris Archer had a right wrist contusion. He is back in the lineup batting leadoff playing right field here tonight for Craig Council and the Brewers. Good evening everyone. Sophia Minert here at Target Field and Craig Council after the game yesterday said it is tough to ask more from our starting rotation and from our bullpen than how well that they have pitched lately. He said it is on the job of our offense to give them more room for error here. So you see the numbers for the offense post All-Star game. Game. They have nine wins on the break, 3-2-3 three, three runs per game. The average at 2-2-6, and the runners in scoring position has been an issue for the offense since the All-Star break. That number dropped down to 164, and in their last nine games, that number has dropped down even less, just six hits for them with runners in scoring position. So assistant hitting coach Jason Lane addressed the offense and how they, they can maintain consistency with their approaches. When we put runs up and, and jump on pitchers, it's it's because it's guys take their walks when when um, pitchers leave the zone and and then you know uh, there's so much there, there's so much advantage when you have guys on base. You know we we face some tough pitchers um, who've had some good performances and and that makes it tough too. So. The Brewers offense will face another tough pitcher in Irvin Santana here tonight. They will Brent send Brent Suter to the mound. We've got first pitch coming up next in the border battle here at Target Field. Strikeout for Urban Santana, third of the ball game. And Suter picks up a strikeout and a swing and a miss. Pulled the string on him. Comes to the plate and a swing and a miss. He struck him out. 0-2. Wow. Swing and a miss again. 0-3. And, and what an inning. That's away. Brent Suter. Another good pitching matchup here. Another tough draw here for the Brew Crew as it will face Urban Santana. Here at Target Field on a gorgeous night. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Let the games begin. A glorious summer evening here in Minneapolis. Let's get the Brewers batting order presented by Potawatomi. Santana, Braun, and Shaw, one, two, three. Aguilar, Thames, and Perez. Arcia, Broxton, and Susak behind the plate. Irvin Santana ready to deal, and we are underway 
at Target Field. As we look at Irvin Santana Rock putting together a pretty good year, I'd say. Yeah, three uh, shutouts, five complete games. He shut out the Padres his last time out. Yes, two runs, four hits. He's got very good command when he's on. He had a terrific start to his season, April and May. Outstanding numbers. Started out the season seven and two. And Santana in the lineup. He got hit by a pitch in the first inning yesterday and right back in there tonight. And a ground ball to Dozier for the first out of the evening. Let's check out the Twins Menards defense. A very good outfield defense for Minnesota. Highlighted by Byron Buxton. I mean, this guy covers a lot of ground out there. Adrianza Polanco on the left. You got Brian Dozer and Joe Maurer on the right and Jason Castro behind home plate hanging the signs for veteran right hander Irvin Santana tonight. And in the two hole tonight for the Brewers is Ryan Braun seen it a touch this season a little bit in his career and uh, back in the two slot here tonight for Milwaukee is again we uh, will see Braun Aguilar and Thames in the lineup together of course along with Travis Shaw Brewers continuing this road swing after taking two out of three in Tampa and this is well hit into center field and leaping up not getting it is Byron Buxton and Ryan Braun turns second on his way to third the relay from Dozier is in time and Braun is out. He had two. He was looking for three, and the Twins are not having it. Yep, and we talked about the good defense for the Twins. They have been outstanding all season long. Fourth fewest errors in all of baseball, and they pull off the cutoff and relay perfectly. And Ryan Braun has been singing the baseball this entire road trip. Finally able to find a hole off the glove of Buxton. Uh, he gets it in quickly, and the relay in time at third base. Not even close. Waiting to apply the tag was Adrianza, and there are two men outs here for the Brewers in this first inning. Eight to four to five on the put out of Braun. Shaw turns on one into right field, but plenty of room for Robbie Grossman, and that'll do it for the Brewers in the first couple of hard hit balls, but Santana keeps them off the board. Now it's Brett Suter's turn to take them out. to get through the first inning of Braun double but Nab trying to turn it into a triple Paul Molitor Hall of Famer the former Brewer greats uniform number retired back in 99 here's Molitor's lineup presented by Potawatomi Brian Dozier Joe Maurer Robbie Grossman one two three Escobar Rosario and Buxton in the middle Adrianza Castro and Jorge Polanco rounding out the Minnesota Twins batting order against the Raptor they call him Brent <laughs> Suter on the mound. How good has he been at Rockers? Yeah. It's just a great 
point that you made in the open you see him for the first time it could be tough in general facing a pitcher for the first time maybe even more so with this guy yeah, he works quickly and he's all you know coming at you with everything I was talking to Andrew Susak before the game and you know he caught him quite a bit down in the minor leagues he says he rushes hitters with his delivery and sometimes that can be a bit disruptive. 15th appearance, eighth start for Suter. Lost his last time out to the Cardinals. And you had a look at Susak behind the plate. Manny Pena out of the lineup. But yes, yeah, Suter has just been terrific in the rotation for the uh, injured Chase Anderson, who will have a rehab start uh, tomorrow for the uh, Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. So working his way back. But. If you have followed this Brewers team at all of late, you understand that pitching has not been an issue. And a swing and a miss there, and Brian Dozier is retired for out number one on the changeup. Yeah, big power in that leadoff spot. Hey, let's check out the Brewers Menards defense tonight. You got Bronx Broxton Santana. Good to see some Santana back in there after getting hit by a pitch yesterday. Shaw Arcia on the left. You got Hernan Perez getting another start at second base. Craig Council trying to get as much offense in there as he can. Thames at first, and Andrew Susak making his first start this year for the Brewers behind home plate. And Joe Mauer, longtime Minnesota twin, and that long contract still in it, as a matter of fact. Year seven of his big eight year contract. And he will hit a sharp. One hopper to Aaron Perez, two up, two down in the home half of the first. The suitor, you know, he likes to get it and go. And he's retired the first two twins here tonight. Is Robbie Grossman in right field tonight? He will DH a fair amount as well for Molitor's team. Number three he watched his team lose 103 times last year. Whatever could have gone wrong did. They had a horrendous start. Never really could dig out of it. Had a stretch where they hung in and then finished poorly. But this year held their own and we talked about in Brewers live pregame. They were taking care of things on the road. Got off to a terrific start away from target field. Yeah, even now, I mean, they haven't really played all that well at home. 25 and 33 at home this year, but you know, they're, they started on the road their first 32 games. They were 23 and nine away from home. They were right in the thick of things until the end of July, where they kind of went into the tank. They weren't winning games, and you know, the Cleveland Indians and Kansas City really started to take off. Yeah, they had some bad timing. Three and zero, the count to Grossman, and that's in there. They're slump with the twins and it was in a direct line with nine game winning streaks from the Royals and the Cleveland Indians three one to Grossman and that missed away and there's the first base runner for Minnesota tonight. And so has done a nice job throwing strike that's only the 13th walk that he's issued to go along with 45 strikeouts. That's in 15 and third inning. So, you know, pounding the strike zone, getting ahead, and getting hitters, believe it or not, to chase that high fastball that tops out at about 87. <laughs> he makes it work. He faces the DH tonight, Eduardo Escobar. One of multiple switch hitters, four, as a matter of fact, in the batting order tonight for the Twins. Nice crowd here tonight is the annual two here and then two back at Miller Park back here tomorrow night and then games three and four of this series back in Milwaukee we'll start a homestand for the crew after the twin series is done the Reds come to town followed by the Pirates swing and a miss there from Escobar one and one the count. And this Brewers pitching staff, they have allowed all of 17 runs in the last nine games. And meanwhile, the Brewers trying to get their bats back in order. They have scored but 20. I guess it's uh, how you look at it, right? I mean, the starting pitching has been so good, you think they should be better than five and four. 
And they've run into some pretty good pitching you could say as this has popped up. Escobar retired as Arcia will squeeze it and that'll do it for the twins. Always having fun Orlando Arcia. We are through one at Target Field. yet between the Brewers and the Twins and uh, scoops from the clubhouse brought to you by Car Soup. Certainly a lot of conversation with Craig Council about the offense and how much they've struggled over the last nine games. And so he said certainly we've hit into some bad luck. We faced some good starting pitching. He said the strikeouts have hurt us at times and he said you know certainly the lack of home runs has hurt us as well. So he said really it's just been the big innings that we've been missing. He said typically when you look up and you win a game there's two or three runs scored in an inning and he said that's just the number that we've been missing here lately and certainly they're looking for that clutch hitting here tonight as they get this series going. I hope you understand what an incredibly professional hit that was from Sophia Minard as uh, that was a pretty hard shot off the bat of Jesus Aguilar. Yeah right at her. <laughs> she just will not never has never will flinch. It's unlike you and I up here. Exactly. I'm diving under the yeah, table. It's a lot further away, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> My goodness. You know, a few years ago, right? She gets hit by a she's doing a live hit at Miller Park, and guys in the outfield going through their warm-up throws, and gets hit. Keeps on going. Jesus Aguilar, a strikeout victim. First of the night for Urban Santana. That begins inning number two. Yeah, he's got a good slider. When that pitch is working for him, along with being able to command inside, he doesn't throw hard, made 91 to 93 miles an hour. He sinks it. Not afraid to come inside. Slider change up. There's that slide away off the outside corner. We saw a starter with a pretty good slider yesterday on St. Pete, Chris Archer. It doesn't get much better than that. No. Here is Eric Thames. He is hitting fifth here. That's where he was yesterday. Third time this season he has been in that part of the lineup. Uh, also was in one of the games against the Nationals and actually homered from the fifth spot in the order. One of the 25 that Thames has so far this season. All a strike against the veteran, the 34 year old Irvin Santana. Start number 23 for him this year. Now you have to believe that this offense is ready to break out at some point, and somebody you would think is going to pay. And Craig Council is waiting for this, waiting for that, you know, the entire second half. This hasn't happened. Yeah, what well, we thought was a, a lineup the way it was built that could avoid it because there is depth there's power and there's depth to go along with it. But I think it is fair to say they run into some pretty good pitching but that yet a lot of strikeouts you're not putting a lot of pressure on defenses and it's 
cause some problems and this team is it's all it can do to scratch out those two to one three to two kind of ball games now. Yeah and the more longer it goes on the more pressure these guys put on themselves. I mean everybody in the order wants to be the guy to hit the home run to get the big hit. And just not relaxed trying too hard. It's not a matter of not trying hard enough. We'll count to Thames with one out here in inning number two. And Thames hits this well into center field. Buxton can fly and he catches up with it in stride. In fact, he almost overran it for out number two. Yeah, he gets such a good jump on the baseball. I mean, he plays, you know, pretty average depth in center field because he goes back so well. It's all about that first step. Good first step for Buxton goes right to the baseball and kind of just glides and makes the catch. You're right, he almost overran it. Guy can run. Those top prospects. People here keep waiting for that breakout season, uh, showing some signs that might be headed in that direction now. Yeah, the defense, uh, the outfield defense has just been superb for the Twins. Two outs, and here is Hernan Perez. And Santana had to exit early yesterday. Perez had to make a on the fly position switch. He's used to it though. Started at third. That's where he was going to play yesterday and then ended up in right field. But the good news is Domingo Santana right back in the lineup tonight. Brewers have been very fortunate here. They've had a couple of scary moments. Travis Shaw on Saturday night. Steele in second taking the throw to the neck and he was right back in there yesterday and now Santana in tonight as Hernan Perez is swing and a miss. Santana with the slider going. Couple of punch outs in inning number two as we stay scoreless. Field, no score, and yeah, the series with the Twins shifts back to Milwaukee in two days as the Brewers and Twins complete the back half of their interleague showdown with a pair of matchups at Miller Park on Wednesday and Thursday. Great seats are still available at Brewers.com. Did you do some editing on that copy by yeah, chance? Oh, I you did. did? I okay. always do. You, you, you eliminated a word there. Mm -hmm. Couple. You, you, yeah, you did. Eddie Rosario leading things off. He'll lift one into right center field. Drifting over is Domingo Santana for out number one. Well, Brent Suter trying to keep on keeping on here. These Brewers starters check it out. You mentioned they haven't been giving up much. Giving up next to nothing. Yeah, and then again, you say nine and four, uh, five and four in his nine game stretch with numbers like that. I guess you look at it. And say it should be a seven and two at least, but uh, can you imagine what the record would be had they not been throwing this way? So five and four, I think Craig Council will take at this point. Now it's time for the offense to take the pressure off these guys. Yeah, you just you figure it's going to happen. Yeah. 
it doesn't just happen, but you watch this sport long enough. It's like basketball. If you can't make a shot, then all of a sudden you feel like you can drop kick shots in. Right. And the Brewers are going to start going to start mashing here. Perhaps tonight, hopefully very, very soon. Byron Buxton at the plate. He's still trying to get that consistency and use uh, his fleet footed ways. The guy can run like pretty much nobody can. You think of some of the fastest guys in the game, and you're looking at one of them without a doubt. I know the old saying, no, don't make me say you can't steal first. And he has had a difficult time. 218 batting average. He's only driven in 17 runs. Great defense only goes so far at this level. Yeah, no doubt. Gonna have to hit at some point. There's a ground ball snapped up by Orlando Arcia. Two up, two down in the second. But with Buxton, he's gonna get a lot of shots, gonna get a lot of chances to prove that he can hit. There's a pretty good core group. They believe here with Buxton, Miguel Sano, who is not in the lineup tonight, drilled in the hand a few days ago. They have not put him on the disabled list, but they have kept him out of the lineup the last few ball games. Ari Adrianza at the plate now for the Twins. He was very briefly, I mean, very briefly, a Brewer. They took him off waivers. At the end of January, but the stay as a Brewer was a very short one. In fact, uh, less than a week later, uh, he was selected by this Twins outfit. Another switch hitter. One and one the count. And this has popped up. Calling for it is Hernan Perez. And another quick inning for Brent Suter. And we are through two in a hurry. The first of four between these two teams. For baseball fans and anybody who has touched this sports uh, for any length of time is uh, almost one of the really good good people rock uh, you're very familiar Don Baylor passed away a long battle uh, with health issues over the last well 14 15 years yeah died uh, today at the age of 68 two years he was a Brewers coach 90 and 91 yeah. one of the tough players but yeah. they say great guy yeah tough as nails I mean quiet but when he spoke people uh, paid attention and uh, again there's so many stories about Don Baylor and his toughness uh, one of them I was reminded about today when he was hitting coach uh, Greg Vaughn had just came up and he was starting to have some success they were working on a tee one he kind of pulled off of one and as Don Baylor was sitting in his chair you know putting baseballs on the tee it, it went right off the end of the bat and hit him right in the mouth <laughs> So he gets up, he kind of shakes his head, gets sits right back down, and starts putting the balls on the tee again. So John Adam, the trainer at the time, you know, he came in and two days later went to the dentist. He had three chipped teeth, 
and, did, and, and didn't even didn't even bat an eye. Didn't even bat an eye. I remember one time we were playing the Twins. He was with the Twins, and Plesac drilled him right in the ribs. I mean, one of those 95, 96 fastballs. I mean, one of those that just kind of hits and spins. Right. And goes straight down. Didn't oh. even bat an eye. It was like he got bit by a mosquito. <laughs> tough, tough guy. And yeah. they say great, a, a great person. Anybody who. Uh, knew him and talked about him they speak of him in such glowing terms and he could hit and he could get hit he got hit by pitches an awful lot sit on top of the plate never player. charge a mound no. no he knew that that was part of it he was right on top of the plate and they were going to come inside they were going to hit him once in a while and he just uh, always just dropped the bat walked the first well, he was just another day at the office and they recognized Don Baylor at the ballpark here tonight and Season acquisition in 87 by the Twins had a big home run in that classic World Series. Man, he really struggled uh, when he was with the Angels. I mean, very difficult for him to get around and, you know, fatigue and pain, but he would never let anybody know about it. Yeah. It was Craig Council's first manager, matter of fact, the Colorado Rockies. Two balls, two strikes to Orlando Arcia, and he slaps one over to third, grabbed by Adrianza, and that is out number one. Mention that with uh, Craig Council's connection with Don Baylor. Let's get more on that as we check in with Sophia. Yeah, Craig Council said, you know, it's certainly sad news to hear of his passing, and as you guys said, he said the words integrity and dignity and the way he, the way he cared about everyone around him was just so prominent, and so he shared a story that when he began his career with the Rockies and in 97 when he was traded to the Florida Marlins, he said that he was called into the office and he said it was sort of your standard meeting of, you know, you've been traded and good luck and we wish you the best, but then he said that Baylor came over to his locker and spent about 15 minutes with him and just sat down with him, wished him the best, explained to him what was going to happen to him in Florida, what the circumstances were with that organization, why they had traded for him. And so he said it was one of those moments that really stuck with him because it helped him so much make that transition. And he said it was just one of those things that really meant a lot to him in that moment. Thank you very much, Sophia. Yeah, the relationship part of the game, that's such a big deal. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was something else. I didn't spend a lot of time with Don, but, you know, I was with the Angels in 1990 and you know, for some reason I think you know, Phil Garner was was away from the ball club and he was managing and he was the manager of the Brewers in that game I talk about quite a bit when they beat uh, beat us the Angels 20 to 7 you scored the early touchdown yeah we had game, a 7 nothing right? lead but uh, the, the route was on very quickly <laughs> my buddy Burt Blylevin started that game for us the Angels he's not here uh, in this series oh miss him. And Roxton a swing and a miss two and two the counts against Irvin Santana a couple of strikeouts for him. This is not a strikeout staff. We'll see if the Brewers can get something going. We know this is a very strikeout prone Brewers team the most in the big leagues. Santana gets that slider going it's trouble. Yeah he's thrown some good ones and it's at bat to uh, Keon Broxton. He got a Broxton and a Buxton in center field tonight. And they can both run like crazy and cover all kinds of ground in center field and both trying to get things squared away at the plate. The fans well aware that Keon has been very streaky. He can get into those hot runs and he swings and hits one deep to left on cue. Thank you very much. A bomb from Keon Broxton to open up the scoring. Yep, he hung a slider. Well, he's given up a lot of home runs at Santana. That's number 25 that he's allowed. Keon waiting back. He hung the slider and almost hit it up there in the third deck. That was a bomb. When he hits them, they're no, not cheap. Watch where this one ends up. Right down the middle. And as soon as he made contact, I think everybody in the ballpark knew that was a home run. Question is, how far is it going to go? Almost in the third deck out there in left center. That was a bolt from Broxton. Here is Susak getting his first start this season with the Brewers. Got in a little bit late last year. Of course, part of that trade involving Will Smith with the San Francisco Giants. Appeared in nine games with the crew late last season. And he pops this one up in play. It'll be Adrianza calling for it. 
And there are two men out in the third. Not a whole lot of foul territory in this ballpark, which uh, helps hitters. Not a lot of room behind home plate. So you have to be uh, heads up. You know, ball gets by the catcher on third base. It's not a guarantee you're going to score. Here is Domingo Santana. Two outs and the base is empty. Don't really have much chance to get into it, but it is impressive that he is right back in there. We talked about a couple of scary moments for the Brewers on the injury front, but Travis Shaw got right back in the next day in the lineup tonight after being hit in the neck on a throw from Jesus Sucre trying to steal second, and that's inside again. Did that get him? He yes, just got did. hit yesterday, and he gets hit again. It was the right wrist yesterday. I think it got him on the left hand this time. Mm. Minnesota Twins not afraid to come inside. They lead the American League and hit batters. That's now 50 that they've hit. That kind of a glancing blow, and Santana gets first base. Chris Archer yesterday first inning right wrist contusion and back to back days getting hit with pitches there was a good job by the Brewers athletic training staff to get him out get that swelling down that's why he's able to play today Santana stays in there and he is the two out base runner Brewers with a run across courtesy of a Keon Broxton home run. Here's Ryan Braun. Banged one off the wall here. Had himself a double. Tried to stretch it to a triple, but was thrown out on the relay. Buxton to Dozier to Adrianza. We mentioned over the weekend the hitting troubles he has had at Tropicana Field. Not the largest of sample sizes, but he was finally able to get a knock yesterday actually had a couple of hits he has hit well in his career against the twins now it's back to normal normally with Braun we talk about he hits well against just about everybody he is hitting at a 325 clip when the Brewers play the Minnesota twins in Ronnie's career yeah, I was talking to Ryan before the ball game today and I said you're going to have some better luck in this series he said it's kind of been that way all year he's uh been robbed a number of times. He was uh, talking about a you know the Cub series where Hayward robbed him a few times, and he got robbed a few times in Tampa as well. You're right. He had some. He had multiple hard hit balls in that series. There's a ground ball to short. That's where Hey Polanco. He bobbles it, and the throw's not in time. He's six. Bronze aboard. Brewers with runners at first and second. Man, yeah, Polanco has made a lot of errors. I mean, that's number 13 for Polanco. And that's about as routine as it gets. Yeah, giving the Brewers another shot at Santana in this inning. Let's see if the Brewers can take advantage of the of the mistake. So this second, or rather third inning, will continue. Here's Travis Shaw. Lined out to right. It ended the first inning. RBI chance for the team's RBI leader. Shaw has driven in 74 so far. The plan was for him to have yesterday off, but when Santana had to exit early, he was right back in there. And Perez had to go to right field, Shaw at third. Travis Shaw is many good things, not the least of which is tough. This has been a major, major acquisition here for the Brewers in the offseason. Part of that Tyler Thornburg deal. Had a great start with the Red Sox last year, tailed off as the year went on, but Shaw has been pretty steady or better than steady throughout here for the Brewers in 2017. Two balls, one strike. 
Yeah, hasn't had too many slumps. I mean, the slumps that he's had have not been one of those catastrophic jobs, you know, like one for 25s. Seems like he snaps out of them quickly. And a couple of hits in the series against the Rays, and that is a hard foul ball out of play. Heads up over there. Everybody's smiling, so that's a good sign. Two and two, the count. Brewers with two base runners. Santana at second. He was hit by a pitch. Braun at first reached on an error. And look at this big crowd at Target Field tonight on a gorgeous summer evening. Nice to be back outside, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Although I'm not sure we wanted to be outside in Tampa Bay. No, it, it didn't take long to get loose, put it that way. Cut the humidity with a cut that air with a knife. It was uh, typical summer weather in Florida. The Brewers able to get a couple of wins there. Trying to restore some order away from home. They had a good road record for a good chunk of the season. Of course, that 10 game road trip was a real tough one for the crew, losing eight of them. But good start on this little five game swing. Two out of three so far. Two and two to Shaw. Change missing and now a full count. Yeah, good take right there. They had the plate a little low. Now the runner is going to get a head start. There's a pitch count. Only a half a dozen needed in the first, but he's doubled it in each of the last two innings. Payoff pitch coming to Shaw, and that is in the air center field. It will drop a base hit. Santana wheeling around third. He's in, bucks it over, runs it. Braun gets the green light, and the throw to the plate is not in time. Braun is in. It's 3 0 Brew Crew. Wow. wow. What a break. I mean, unearned runs against Santana here. Two outs, nobody on. After the home run, but yeah, bucks him with the error. Now the advantage of the full count three two two outs everybody running on the pitch you got to credit Ryan Braun not slowing down around third base A little jam shot breaks his bat in half but dumps it into center field and Ryan Braun running hard bucks and over runs it and Ed Cedar wind, windmills him around guess they're barely able to beat it well, the Brewers do take advantage of the mistake they score two extra runs. Two errors in this inning for the Twins. Talked about the great outfield defense, but a miscue right there as this third inning continues for Jesus Aguilar. If they came into play with only 53 errors, that's fourth fewest in all of baseball. So unusual for Minnesota. It's an RBI single for Shaw and then the E8. Rock mentioned a couple of unearned runs here for the crew. And this was after the Broxton solo homer that opened up the scoring. Well, a nice crooked number here for Milwaukee in the third. Been a while, huh? It sure has. Santana with a 2 0 to Aguilar. Rock mentioned that great start Santana had. He was 4 0 in April with an 0 7 7 earned run average. It was still about two and a half in May. In June, things got away, had a couple three blow up outings. But the body of work good 12 and 7, a 3.28 ERA, ERA in five complete games. He had that earned run average coming in, good for seventh in the American League. Trying to ride him to some success. The pitching struggles well documented. Last year his ERA was 3-3-8. It was still the worst pitching staff statistically in the American League. And it's still near the bottom. We are trying to revamp some things around here. New front office crew, Derek Falvey. Chief Baseball Officer Thad Levine, the new general manager. And 
what they're trying to do it likely would sound very familiar with what Brewers fans are familiar with David Stearns Matt Arnold and that group what they're trying to do in Milwaukee and they surprised people early in the season a combination of playing well the rest of the division really wasn't doing a whole lot it kind of sounds a familiar story doesn't it, <laughs> it sure does <laughs> Found themselves in the thick of it, and they still are. They're within striking distance of the wild card, but there's a lot of traffic in front of them, and they became more of a seller at the trade deadline. Aguilar with a foul ball at third, with Jaime Garcia being moved, and, and obviously Brandon Kinsler, the former Brewer, who is putting together a terrific year, and now he has been added to that bullpen. For Dusty Baker in the Washington Nationals. And you wonder what kind of signal that sends to the clubhouse, right? Exactly. It's uh, one of those things that you, you, you wonder because in the thick of the fight, they slumped at a bad time. It seems ahead of them. Royals and Indians got hot. But they're still in the mix. Three and two to Aguilar. Travis Shaw, the runner at second. Good inning in progress here for the Brewers. Aguilar, a couple of home runs last week. He has 11 on the year. Last time he went deep was Thursday at Miller Park against the Cardinals' Michael Waka. They can't figure out. They can't get together on what they want to throw. Castro and Santana. They're trying to work him away pretty much uh, every pitch. Every now and again, I'll leak one over the over the plate. But yeah, Santana, or I should say, Aguilar struck out on the slider off the plate his first time up. So they get reorganized as Aguilar settles back in. Payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Taking something off. Change up from Santana. Well, a good start for Keon Broxton. 105 miles an hour, traveled 431 feet. Started a three run inning for the Brew Crew. Brewers take advantage of two twins errors. They now have three runs scored in the third time now for our minor league scouting report brought to you by UW Whitewater Warhawks. The Colorado Springs Taylor Youngman yesterday had a strong outing six innings for him one earned run on seven hits three strikeouts for him. He's gone eight and one with a two nine eight earned run average and 11 starts for Colorado. And remember Youngman was the uh, in the 2011 draft their 12th overall pick and some other news from the minor leagues. The Brewers have promoted infielder Jake Gatewood from Carolina line into the Biloxi Shuckers. All right Sophia thank you very much. That guy can hit a little bit. Yeah just a touch. 
Jake Gatewood. Yeah. Hear about him a lot. Yeah, we have this season. Name to keep in mind moving forward. Jason Castro leading off the catcher. Eight, nine, and one here in the Twins order. Brent Suter needed just 10 pitches to get through the second inning. One pitch, and that's a base hit right through the shift and in the right field. There is hit number one for the Twins. Yep, giving up his first hit against a left-handed batter. Soon has been pretty good against lefties. Jorge Polanco switch hitter and yet he has still struggled mightily against left handed pitching he's actually struggled a good chunk of the season at the plate and one for his last 21 against left handers. The other part of Suter's game that doesn't get a whole lot of play. The fact that he holds runners extremely well. Good move to first. He's got a number of different looks. That is hit well into left field. A base hit. Braun is over there. On his way to third is Castro. He is in as Polanco moves to second. Threat here for the Twins for the first time tonight. And bottom of the order getting it done. And Castro Polanco. And Castro hitting a fastball. Same here. Fastball in, up in the zone, and Polanco centers on it. Hits it out there into the gap in good speed. He's able to get into second base. I would imagine Braun should have thrown that ball into second. Keep that double play alive. Runners at second and third here to begin the third inning. Ryan Dozier at the plate. Dozier again, a 20 home run guy. Fourth consecutive year he has hit that mark. And that monster second half of the season last year. With 28 home runs after the All Star break. Ended up with 42 on the year. One pitch. Let's hit to left field. Braun makes the catch and holding will be Castro. And that is out number one. Man, Brewers had the right guy at third base. The catcher. Castro doesn't run all that well. They're starting to make some pretty solid contact off a of suitor, getting a lot of the plate. Not deep enough to score the run. One out for Joe Maurer. Rounded to Perez in the first. Well, we talked about the outfield defense of the Twins, but those around here will tell you that Maurer has been just terrific defensively at first was the former catcher hasn't caught since 2013 concussion issue forcing a move there as he sends this one down the line and left and that'll carry into the seats. Those around here who tell you he might be gold glove good he wins it. Is, is to be determined, but he's been very good defensively over at first. Yeah, he's made that adjustment nicely. He's only committed one error. Two strikes and nothing. So he had a stretch of years where he put up 
huge, huge numbers at the plate. It's all been pretty modest so far this season. Six-time All-Star, three batting titles on his resume. The last coming in 2009. And that's a one-hopper snagged by Perez. He makes a nice play to retire Maurer. Castro will score. They get the Twins on the board. But the Brewers will take the out there yeah, two that, away. That goes off his glove. That's two runs in. So Perez is able to, you know, grab it. I think that ball was actually by him, but able to stick the glove out and get the out of first base. A productive out now for Joe Maurer. Yeah, driving in a run. Two outs. Blanco at third. Robbie Grossman at the plate. Grossman walked in the first inning but was left stranded there. Both teams putting a dent in the scoreboard in the third. We run third for the crew and. Minnesota with a run across here in the bottom half. Suter trying to hold it at one. Yeah, Brewers uh, trying to keep it at a nick, not a dent. One one pitch. Back up the middle, but Perez positioned perfectly. And that'll do it. And it is just a nick as the Twins pick up a run. Eric Thames will try to get things started for the Brewers. He'll lead off as we move to the fourth. on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Toyota, let's go places. Gorgeous night in the Twin Cities. Two here and two at Miller Park. Coming up later in the week. Good start for the crew here tonight, and the damage was minimal. Twins had a big inning brewing there but scored just the one run and Thames now leads off here in the fourth. Eric a fly ball to Buxton in the second inning. Thames at the plate. Good time to check out our Powerball home run leaderboard. Still at the top. Travis Shaw right behind him. Santana and Broxton also in there. Brewers with eight players with at least 10 home runs this season. Been that kind of year. A lot of home runs. 
Craig Cass would like to see a few more runs scored the way Shaw drove in a run. James goes the other way to left field. That's Eddie Rosario out number one. Home runs are all great, but when they dry up like they have since the second half started, you got to figure out other ways. And Brewers have not excelled too well in that department. Runners in scoring position. Neither one of those these two teams have done a good job with that this year. Twins just a bit under 250. Yeah, the Brewers a shade less than 240. That's been a you know, storyline uh, throughout the year, and it's really been an issue of late. But yet we keep talking about that, and they are still winning their share of games. They enter this work week one half game behind the Cubs. Great Council's team to still find a way to stay in the thick of it here. Hernan Perez. Strikeout victim. Three of them so far for Santana. Cubs, by the way, playing the Giants tonight. That game will begin in about an hour at AT&T. Arietta on the mound for the Cubbies. Perez to left field, and that's going to fall in front of Rosario. A base hit. And location a little different for Santana today than it was his last time out. He only allowed four hits in nine innings against the Padres, gave up a couple of runs. We are told it's all about fastball location when he's able to you know, catch the corners with a fastball and then put hitters away with that slider. That's a uh, that's a good sign. He's made some mistakes with his fastball. The home run on a slider that was right down the middle. And the 25th he allowed this season. Here's Orlando Arcia. He had a terrific series against the Rays at the plate. Made a big play defensively as well on Saturday night. Takes a big old cut there and doesn't get it. Yeah, he'd like to have that one back. Hanger. See the 11 home runs, a couple coming in the series against the Rays. This home run was the only run of the day for Milwaukee yesterday. Popped out of play and near us, and it went right between two dudes who should have made it. Yep, first made row. Play, yep. You don't want to be reaching <laughs> over that balcony, though, that railing? No. When in doubt, stay back. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's only a baseball. <laughs> it caught just a little cluster of empty seats. There aren't many empty here tonight. Garcia ground ball in the hole, diving stop. They'll get one to turn to first, not in time. Adrianza with a nice play as they'll get the force of Perez at second. There are two men out. Nice play to get to the lead runner. Marcia a little too fast to turn a double play. You can see him going down, making a nice throw to second base. A pretty quick turn by Dozier. Got to make sure he's got that foot on the bag, does he? Yep, looks like he does. First thing they're looking for in that Brewers dugout on a play like that is the second baseman actually touched the bag. You don't get the neighborhood anymore. Here is Keon Broxton. Launched one out of here in the third inning. See if he gets a slider. Launched a slider his last time up. Traveled 431 feet, in fact. And this is hit well into right center field, and that's going to go off the base of the wall. Arcia wheeling around third. He's going to score. Broxton slams on the brakes, throw to the plate. It gets by Castro, and now Broxton on his way to third, and it's a four to one ball game. Yeah, have a night, Keon Broxton. 
Another error for the Twins. That's going to be a throwing error. Allowing Broxton to get the third base. Brewers got a huge break on that ball out in the gap. It got stuck on you know, the bottom of the fence. That was a fastball away. Watch where this ball hits and it just dies right there. If it bounces off the fence, probably not going to be able to score. Buxton has to go get it. That's going to be an error on Dozier. Allowing Broxton to get the third base. So three errors now for the Twins. Boy, that's a really encouraging sign of the way Broxton is swinging the bat here tonight. Andrew Susak at the plate. Yeah, he hammered that one out into the gap. I mean, the home run's one thing, but you love to see Keon waiting back and driving it in the right center. He's got a lot of power in that direction. He's got the good look going with the uniform, too. Yeah. A little old yeah. school. Yeah, I like it. Keeps hitting like that. I think you're going to keep seeing that look. Two strikes and nothing to the Brewers catcher Andrew Susak. Castro with the block. Well, he's had to fight his way to get back up here. Thought to be in the mix in spring training and then had the neck injury and then dealt with the headaches. You know, Sophia reported on that over the weekend and was able to fight his way back up here of course he is here now because of the rib injury to Jet Bandy Stephen Vogt still working his way back from the knee injury the one two roller over to a Ray Adrianza at third and that'll do it for the Brewers but another scoring inning and Keon Broxton Having himself a pretty good night. This was how he followed his homer in the third. He brings Arcia around. It's a four to one lead for the crew. Four one lead for the Brewers we move to the bottom half of the fourth inning here at Target Field on a gorgeous Monday night downtown Minneapolis Suter giving up a run into third work against Eduardo Escobar here leading off the fourth. Escobar popped to Arcia his first trip and he lines one out the left Braun drifting back and he'll make the catch for out number one and let's check in again with Sophia Minnick. Matt the showstopper in baseball tonight we go out to Nationals Park and it was a milestone home run for Bryce Harper this solo home run 
out to right. That is number 150 for him on his career. He's the 14th player in baseball history to have 150 before turning 25 years old. And an interesting note, he is 24 years, 295 days old tonight, which is the same exact age that Mike Trout was when he hit 150 last year. And that is hit awfully well down the line and right, hooking a foul ball off the bat of Eddie. Rosario. Yes, Sophia, to, to pick up on her point, you know, those are you know, two of the guys. Their approaches are different. One obviously very demonstrative in Harper and <laughs> Trout. We saw him. That's an understatement, right? Yeah. We saw Trout at Miller Park last year when the Angels came in, and you know, I guess he would be under that category of old school, but you're talking about yeah. two of the faces of the game right now. Yeah, he had a monster series against Milwaukee. But, uh, you know, Trout. He was gunning for 1,000 hits before he turned 25 or 26, yeah. was it? Right, 25. It just missed. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it just missed yesterday. But uh, incredible talents, both of them. It's fun to watch. It's part of the fun of interleague play. A swing and a miss. That's fun to watch, too. Brent Suter with a strikeout of Rosario. And there are two outs here on the board. Yeah, fastball up around his neck. That's exactly where Susak wanted it. These two guys work together down in the minor leagues. In Triple A Colorado Springs, so they're very familiar with each other. Probably one of the reasons why Pena caught yesterday. He caught Jimmy Nelson, and I would imagine he wanted Susack to face his old teammate down in Colorado Springs. So far, so good. Base is empty, two men out for Byron Buxton. To be short, his first trip. He's 23 years old as Buxton he was the second overall pick in 2012 right behind Carlos Correa. And with that comes a lot of external pressure and no doubt puts it on himself as well. This will be popped up in Thames running out of room. That's the key to this game, you know. I mean, what player can not worry about pressure that's coming from outside of what you're doing? I think that's what Orlando Arcia does so well. I mean, I don't think anything bothers him at all. That's a I don't great think he point. pays a whole lot of attention to what people are saying about him, good or bad. He just plays, he's enjoying it. It's the guys that don't think about that stuff or, or listen to it that are the ones that end up being. You know, the most successful. Yeah, it's interesting with Arcia because there's a fair amount of fair amount of hype. I think that's fair to say on the fan base uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin. Want to see Arcia in there making plays, but even he can't get to that as Buxton shoots one through the hole for a two-out single. Yeah, went down and got a curveball. Pretty good piece of hitting by Buxton. Right now, this guy's not at first base too long either. Even with uh, you know down by three runs. He's got 18 stolen bases. He's only been caught once, and that was a pretty good pitch. Able to hook it into the hole and left. Shortening up that swing and just putting it in play. Well, keep an eye on him with two men out in the fourth. A. Ray Adrianza at the plate. First pitch swinging, and he rifles one back up the middle. Buxton to second, and after Suter retired the first two, the Twins have something going. Bottom of the order is uh, kind of figuring it out a little bit. All four hits have come bottom of the order, six on down. Now you'll face Jason Castro. The first hit of the night, and inning a goal for the Twins. Picked up in the offseason, he signed a three year contract. Over from the Astros, where he was a first round pick seven years ago. Like his defense, his work behind the plate. And that's sure if Buxton's going to try and steal, but I think maybe your best opportunity, perhaps. Could be trying to throw out that trail runner, Adrianza. 
Not only that guy doesn't get as good a jump. That man at second base is tough to throw out. And Shaw is way off the line. 1 0 misses. Two and one with an ERA of just a touch over two and a half for suitors since replacing Chase Anderson in the rotation. And into some trouble here now. Three and zero to Castro with two runners on. will let it go. It's a four pitch walk. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Buxton hit a pretty good pitch. Adrian's hit the first pitch into left field. I should say in the center field, and now a four pitch walk to Castro. And Red Suter finds himself in a big, in some trouble. For Jorge Polanco. Jorge. A big year at the plate for the Twins. So not a big year, but a much better year than this year at 282 a year ago. Hovering around 220 this season, but a single tonight. Turning around in a bad way for Suter, see if he can get out of it. Buxton at third, Adrianza at second, Castro the runner at first. Much needed. Able to get in on his hands, up and in. What you like to talk about, Rock? We mentioned a lot in this business about first pitch strikes, but now here's the big one right here, right? The 1 1 pitch. Especially with the bases loaded. What's he going to throw here? Is it going to be a 2 and 1 count or a 1 2 count? Big difference. And it will be a 2 and 1 count. An advantage hitter. This is where the off speed stuff of Brett Suda comes in handy. Two one hit sharply and a fair ball down the line. Buxton will score. Ibrianza will score. It's a two run double and a one run game. Yeah, bottom of the order. They have, they have been tough on Brent Suter. This all started two outs, nobody on, a two strike count on Buxton. And three hits later in a walk. Twins have the go ahead run at second base. And this inning turned on a dime. After Escobar and Rosario were retired, Buxton. Got it started with a single four straight now have reached Brian Dozier at the plate. You're playing with fire with these two guys Dozier and Bauer. Can't get that change up for a strike. Bullpen is starting to get active. Josh Hader, he's ready to get loose. Swing and a foul tip there, one and two the count. And same pitch changeup. Back to back changeups. This one a little closer to being a strike. Dozer chased it. Two runs in, two runners on. One two pitch coming.
Twins having some success the first time through seeing Brent Suter. First game seeing Brent Suter. Change of fortune here. Talked about it before the first pitch tonight. You see this guy for the first time and can have you going back to the dugout shaking your head. Twenty five pitch inning here so far for Suter. And remember he retired the first two of the inning. Another full count. Castro at third. Polanco, the runner at second. Payoff pitch. Popped him up. Arcia calling for it. And the inning is over, but the Twins with a couple of runs all generated after the first two were retired. One run game, Brewers and Twins in Minneapolis. for Milwaukee over the Twins as we head to the fifth time now for our unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile some injury news for the Cardinals they have activated Dexter Fowler from the 10 day disabled list he's been out since the end of July with a left forearm strain so they welcome back his season he's got a 241 average of 14 home runs in 82 games for the Cardinals and along the division Joey Votto tonight hit career number 136 at Great American Ballpark he is now the all time home run leader at his home park and that was Votto's 30th home run of the season. All right Sophia thank you very much as Domingo Santana going after the first offering from Irvin Santana Adrianza handles it and quickly there's one out in the fifth. We'll see Votto and the Reds at Miller Park coming up this weekend Friday Saturday and Sunday. And Votto having a big season. He is for a team that is in last but he is still ever dangerous. Here's Ryan Braun's night at the plate presented by Wendy's. He doubled in the first yet cut down trying to stretch it to a triple. Reached on an error in the third inning and scored. It could be a short start for both of these guys tonight. Pitch count getting up there for Santana. 71 coming up. And Braun goes the other way, and that will drop. Second hit of the night for Ryan Braun. You have any idea how hard that is to do? <laughs> I mean, yes. what he just did, a fastball just sticks the bat out there. It's not hard to make contact. A lot of guys just pop that pitch up. Now watch the way he gets on top of this. And this is the way he warms up. You ever watch him on the ball on right. deck circle? He's yep. swinging at that high pitch, leveling out the swing, and 
Hits a rope down to right field. That's why my career ended in high school. <laughs> Couldn't do that. Yeah, it is. It's tough. A lot of big leaguers can't do that. There's Travis Shaw, run scoring single in the third inning. Gives him 75 RBIs now. That is smoked right field down the line. A foul ball. Wow. Yeah, tried to sneak one up and in by him, and nothing doing. Shaw hit it hard, but hooked it foul. And quick hands on that inside corner. Normally he likes it down and in. That was up and in. Still able to hit it hard. Oh, and to the count. And Santana strikes him out. Yeah, went a little higher that time. Jesus Aguilar he struck out a couple of times here. Santana has fanned four. Santana, an all star this year, second time he has. Participated, pitched the sixth inning of the All Star game this year. Actually, gave up a home run to Yadier Molina. Aguilar with a little bloop, and Polanco will squeeze it. That's it for the Brewers. Eight pitch inning for Santana. Remains a one run game. Target field, a 4-3 lead. Josh Hader coming on now for Brent Suter. And more than 200 nonprofit organizations are supported through the efforts of our fans, players, and other supporters. So you can join Brewers Community Foundation and help us give back. BCF always making a difference in the Milwaukee community. All right, thank you very much, Sophia. We move to the bottom of the fifth. And I rock you right, at least in terms of a short night for one of these starters here tonight. Brent Suter's evening is done after four, and now Josh Hader on the mound. Yeah, contact was getting pretty good against Brent, and what a contrast this is going to be. And yeah, Brent Suter, now Josh Hader thrown in the upper 90s with that slider. Look at the opponent batting averages, lefties, righties, it really doesn't matter. Outstanding work for Hader. 
And you figure he might be in there for two or three innings. That's one thing he can do. He can do a lot of things, including take care of business in multiple innings if needed. And he is out there to face Joe Maurer. Maurer looks at a strike. So four innings, five hits, three runs allowed by Suter. A couple of walks, like number of strikeouts. Fourth inning got away a bit. He needed but five pitches to retire the first two hitters and then four in a row reached. And bottom of the order for the Twins getting all the doing all the damage against him tonight. Hader has had a couple of outings this season where he has worked three innings including July 7th at Yankee Stadium. In fact that was a night he picked up his first big league win. Come from behind effort for the Brewers in New York. Also went three against the Cubs on July 29th. And that's the thing when you bring Hader in more, most most of the time you want to get multiple innings out of him because at this point in his career as a reliever really not able to go back to back days so you get as much out of him as you can. And when you bring him in it's a good spot for him. Two balls, two strikes to Joe Maurer. Let me see what he has done of late. Pretty good work against the Cubs in particular. Turning in pretty good work throughout the course of this season when he was brought up from Colorado Springs. Yeah, that uh, adding against St. Louis came in, walked the batter, and was taken out. Now we're extending the at bat. He is good at working counts. He will look at a lot of pitches. Allen one off here, still two and two. Mauer, Grossman, and Escobar. Well, we're talking about the pitches per plate appearance and compared to the MLB average. He doesn't chase too much. He does not. Payoff. And he won't chase that. Draws a walk. So that's how Haters' night begins. Twins have scored in each of the last two innings. A run in the third. Two more in the fourth. Here's Robbie Grossman. Attacking the first pitch, fouling it off. Grossman was sixth round pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates back in 08, 27 years old. So it's a promise in the early stage of his career. In fact, was the 2011 Minor League Player of the Year in the Pirates system, but tough to crack in that outfield, trying to crack the lineup. Charlie Marte was starting to emerge and it was off to Houston for a time for Grossman, now a twin. Yeah, Paul Maurer is just trying to find somebody that's going to put some runs on the board, provide some power. Really, two guys provide all the punch for Minnesota. That's Dozier and Sano. And Sano not in the lineup, still trying to get that hand right after being hit by pitch a few days ago. And that gets by Susak, and that allows Maurer to advance. One he should probably had is probably going to be a pass ball, you'd think. Susak with uh, a lot of experience catching Hader and uh, Brett Suter. Should have had that one. And that will, in fact, be a pass ball. 
as hard as that is for me to say. <laughs> that does hurt, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> A ball, two strikes. It's Grossman's second year with the Twins. Hit 280 last year, gave him a little pop. Over 99 games, he homered 11 times. Spent three seasons with the Astros. One two again and again a foul. This is where that change up would really come in handy for Hader. He's still working on that pitch really not. Doesn't have enough confidence in it to throw it in these situations basically fastball slider. He will throw one from time to time. Really doesn't have a lot of confidence in it yet. Fastball misses to even the count. Hater on in relief of Brent Suter went the first four. Ready with the two two. And this is lifted out of play. Grossman extending the at bat, as did Joe Maurer. Yeah, it's been all fastballs. Not one breaking pitch to Grossman in this at bat. He's starting to zero in a little bit. Well, after games of two nothing, three nothing, and two to one, more offense here in a Brewers game. But still a one run lead. Exactly. That's the, the one common thread. <laughs> Another yeah. tight one. There's the slider. Just missed. After all those fastballs, all he had to do was throw that for a strike. And they would have had him. Full count to Robbie Grossman. It in the air to shallow left. Braun is there for out number one. I was getting ready to say it's tough to see. It's kind of twilight, but after being the Tropicana Field, <laughs> anything up in the air is probably easy to see. Hey, the first 20,000 fans at Miller Park to see the Brewers battle the Reds this Friday, August 11th at 7 o'clock. We'll get a free Brew Crew Performance T-shirt, courtesy of 94.5 KTI Country. Tickets and details, visit Brewers.com today. Another good looking shirt. Free shirt Friday. Here's Eduardo Escobar with one out. Mauer the runner at second. Grinding through this year. To Maurer, got Grossman to fly to left on a full count. Man, Josh having to work a little bit more than we normally see him. And velocity down just a touch. Not missing by much though. Check it out. One either or and one just outside the zone 2 0 pitch. And we mentioned the effectiveness of this Brewers staff the starters bullpen has been outstanding as well. Since July 28th. ERA of well below two. That's Suter going just four innings tonight. Yeah, thinking about that last inning, two outs, nobody on. Ended up giving up a couple of runs. And a four pitch walk, second walk here given up by Hader. A 
really good Derek Johnson to pop out of the dugout. Yeah, Hader can be wild, but we really haven't seen a lot of it as of late. We mentioned it just outing against the Cardinals. A couple of appearances ago, he walked the only man that he faced. That was Matt Carpenter. And they took him out. Well, this bullpen, as you mentioned, has been so good in a rather extended stretch. Yesterday, obviously, it was a, a tough one. Jacob Barnes giving up the home run to Steven Souza Jr. to end the game, but looking at a ERA of 169 since uh, July 28th, it's as good as it gets. And for the season, they're fifth in the National League and earned run average. That's pretty good. 4.06. The entire pitching staff. So a bump yesterday, but there have not been many here of late out of this bullpen. A threat going here. Eddie Rosario with runners at first and second, and that's a shot just foul. The attacking first pitch, figuring after a four pitch walk, he's going to throw a strike. Reaching on a walk, likewise Eduardo Escobar, 0 and 1 to Rosario. And this is hit in the air, shallow right field, and right there is Santana, out number two. Those two pitches were really inside. I mean, way off the plate. It's amazing that Rosario can even get a bat on there. In his mind, he's going to swing regardless. Well, now, Hader will face the hitter who got things started for the Twins in the fourth inning after the first two were retired. His single to left, he became the first of four straight Twins to reach. Which we scored on the Polanco double. And grounded to Arcia back in the second inning. Wave and a miss, one and one the count. So on the DL with a groin strain for a time. Came back recently, his last week, in fact. One one pitch. Do not miss by a whole lot, do they? I mean, that first pitch right at the knees should have been a strike. That last pitch up and in didn't miss by much. So he's right around the strike zone. The 2 1. Blow by to even at a 2 2. Pitch himself out of trouble. A couple of walks. As of in trouble at the moment. Now the 2 2. Those are full counts. Look at that cluster of pitches. I mean, everything really on the plate. I mean, really. Not getting a whole lot of help. Yeah, where's all the where's the three balls at? Maybe one. Three two. Mentioned trying to get that average back up, but he had a pretty good stretch in July. Did Buxton on a good hot streak, including a couple of home runs. Hater loading up again for the 3 2. 
And he'll need to do it again. Josh Hader, the 23 year old out of Millersville, Maryland. In a battle, already 30 pitches. A lot of foul balls. One more time, the payoff. No, it isn't one more time. <laughs> All these foul balls, the result of Josh throwing nothing but fastballs, really. Throwing a couple of sliders in this inning, but you know, the more you throw the fastball, the better these hitters are going to look at it and maybe get a good swing. That last one right at the top of the zone. The Twins hitters doing a good job of wasting. Two strike pitches fouling off eight times here in the inning again the three two and now the bases are loaded three walks given up by Hader not to belabor the point but not missing by much if at all on several of the pitches that he did not get. Fifteen balls, seventeen strikes. That's not exactly what you want to see. Well, they are loaded here for Minnesota. Hey Ray Adrianza at the plate. Twenty-seven year old, four years with the San Francisco Giants. He'll get that one. Okay. <laughs> we'll take it. Absolutely. Here's Oliver Drake. This might be a one and done inning here for Hader. You see that pitch count, 34th offering of the inning coming up. Push his way through here in the fifth inning. Yeah, well placed slider would look good right here. Maybe down in the dirt, have Susak block it. I think his uh, the only problem he's having, he's afraid he's going to hang it. And had a very good one in this appearance. Two strikes and nothing to Adrianza. Here it comes. Dig deep here in the fifth inning. Mauer at third, Escobar at second, Buxton the runner at first. Short night work for Brent Suter here this evening. Go on the first four. The 0 2. Somewhat of an idea how good of stuff he has. I mean, how you know, difficult sometimes his pitches are to identify. He hides the baseball pretty well with that delivery because Adrianza has had three pitches to hit that were well in the strike zone, only able to foul him off. Madeline Hader. Heavy workload in this fifth inning for Josh Hader. His 37th pitch coming up. And he makes it his final one of the inning. He strikes out Adrianza as the Twins leave him loaded. Hader walked him full but got out of it. Brewers still lead 4-3.
hanging on to this 4-3 lead after the Twins left them loaded in the fifth. Hey, Brewers fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app, take Fox Sports Wisconsin and Brewers baseball with you wherever you go. That was a grinder of an inning. Well, able to get through it with basically just fastballs. He threw maybe two or three sliders. None for strikes, but with his stuff, able to get through it. Long time to sit for Irvin Santana facing Eric Thames here to begin inning number six. A couple of fly balls from Thames here so far. In front of the change there, one and one. Irvin Santana, author of a no hitter in his career. Back with the Angels against the Indians six years ago. A couple of one hitters as well. Year three of a four year deal with the Twins. You see the numbers in his career. And last item, 21 complete games, five of them so far this season. And he issues a walk to Thames. That's how the sixth inning begins. Hey, it's time for tonight's Tavern of the Game winner. It's Farmers Inn Tavern in Darien. If they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. All right, a leadoff walk to Thames. Here is Hernan Perez. Perez singled his last trip. Continues to play all over the ballpark. Second base is where he is tonight. And that is sharply hit. Diving stop Polanco. They'll get the force of Thames. Nice play by Jorge Polanco. Yeah, he made an error early in the game, but uh, this defense has been tight pretty much all season long. And showed at that time a heck of a play. Able to snare it and get the force out at second base. Well, one away here for the Brewers. New base runner is Aaron Perez. The hitter is Orlando Arcia. He's grounded to third and hit into a fielder's choice. Went five for ten in the series against the Rays. Couple of home runs. Also triple. Saw a little bit of everything from RCO. We generally do if you take almost any handful of games, any four or five game sample size, you're liable to see uh, any number of good things from RCO. Terrific relay throw to the plate. Cut down a runner at Tropicana Field. Corey Dickerson, as a matter of fact, was the runner. Great Always relay from Braun to Arcia. Always seems to be able to do something to help you win. You see that home run right there, the only run allowed by Tampa Bay in yesterday's ball game. A bomb in the left field. That defense on the bases, throwing arm, glove, you name it. A foul ball. He was trying to bail out of there, but it's a foul ball. Power ball home run count 11 on the year for Arcia with his work yesterday. Santana has hit a batter already tonight. We mentioned the Twins lead the American League and hit batsmen now at 50. And Arcia almost took one there. One and one the count. And Brewers hit their share too. They do. In fact, I was at 45, the number. Got a few ahead of them there in that category in the National League, but they will 
will hit their share. You are correct. Swing and a miss. That's a good change up he has. That looks like a fastball out of the hand, straight down the middle of the plate, and just never gets there. Chokes off the speed, and RC out in front of it. A ball, two strikes. Three runs off Santana, although two were unearned in the third inning. The run across in the fourth. The one two Perez running pitch is taken low and away and the throw down not in time. A stolen base for Aaron Perez as Brewers team leads the National League in stolen bases. Adds another one. Yeah, got a really good jump. Castro, kind of an average thrower behind home plate. And not a very good throw. Not much on. A little high. And Perez able to get in safely. Another man in scoring position for Milwaukee. The area of stolen bases is also a, a product of depth with this Brewers team. Marcia a swing and a foul tip. Into the mid of Castro, and that's the second out of the inning. Irvin Santana actually had a good pitching duel with Jason Lane, that's right. Brewer's staff. Interesting career. Turned himself into a pitcher. And it actually was Jason's first starting assignment on the mound. He had a couple of relief appearances, but he started that game, and he and Santana, they were dueling, throwing up a lot of zeros. This is when Santana was with the Braves and Jason with the Padres. It's amazing how much he remembered about that start. <laughs> he really did. We were talking to him on a plane about it. Incredible. <laughs> Breaking it all down. I threw a slider to Evan Gaddis. I didn't want to throw him a slider. I threw it anyway, and he hit it out. It's like he's I still, mean, he's kicking himself three yeah, years still, later. Still thinking about that. Yeah, <laughs> got a base hit too. Ended up being a two nothing game. Baseball guys are something. The stuff they remember. Huh? It is. It's fun. I mean, it, for the fan of me, just likes to sit back and. You know, Put it on a tee. Hey, Jason, remember about that? You, you had a pretty good duel with Santana, and then just let him go. Yeah. So it's the fun part about yeah. this gig, just to, to hear you guys, all you guys, tell the stories. Nice thing about those long flights. Had a little time. Yeah, time to cover that. And a slider that Broxton misses one and two. The count. That's the thing about Jason Lane as a coach. I mean, he can speak to just about everybody on the team. About something, pitching, defense, base running, hitting. That's why he's on the coaching staff. All two strikes to Broxton. Had a good night here so far. A home or a double. Perez dancing around. Encouraging signs here from Broxton at the plate tonight. A couple of hits. Once again, Santana and Castro want to be squared away. What do you want to throw the slider? The slider is the one he hit in the second deck out in left center. And fastball, he doubled to right to drive in a run. See, it gives him a changeup. He hadn't seen that one yet.
Perez still messing around with Santana. Fastball misses inside to Broxton. Talked about the streaky ways of Keon in the slumps, but he's had extended stretches where he's hit in that 330 to 350 range. And you know, we're talking about a 28 game run, a 16 game run. He can get on some pretty good tears. 2 2 pitch. That is strike three called. He's not so sure. Bill Welke apparently is. Inning over. Brewer still up a run. Or is another inning of work for Josh Hader as you see his look tonight. Check out the left of your screen. That was his look last night. It was the uh, the purple theme on the flight to Minneapolis. See Ryan Braun looking like Prince. He have a wide variety of look there, but that that's Hader. That's the uh, that's the dinosaur there. Is he supposed to be Barney? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, Barney the kitty dinosaur. It could be. Could it's be. A little bit more threatening than <laughs> Barney does. <laughs> He had a heck of a time getting down the uh, the aisle of he, the plane. He did. It was a struggle, and he just hits Castro here to begin the sixth inning. Yeah, his tail knocked over my soda. <laughs> Don't you hate that when it happens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, perfectly good soda. <laughs> Wiped out by a dinosaur tail. Wonder why you were crying there for a couple seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were some interesting looks, guys coming on the plane. A lot of teams do that. They have their theme trip, and the Brewers had theirs from Tampa to Minneapolis. Here is Jorge Polanco. We were kind of uh, conservative in our. Uh, we had we had the the purple or, or the lavender yeah. shirts, but that was about as far as, yeah, we, as went, we went. We went with the yeah. soft pastels. I wasn't yeah. about to get yeah. into a dinosaur outfit. Yeah, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Took a pass on that. I, I know you thought about it. Yeah. I like the look of Thames back there. He just had a basic purple shirt. Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> well, Brawny was proud of his outfit, though. As well, he should. <laughs> Strong look. And appropriately enough, with the uh, a little tribute to Prince as the plane landed, it was raining. So, a yeah, little, little purple rain. Purple going rain, there. yeah. There weren't any raspberry berets, however. <laughs> That's good rock. Some solid, solid Prince knowledge. Mm -hmm. Polanco with a little bloop into right field. That's a base hit. Well, Hader got out of trouble in the fifth, and he is getting into more trouble here in the sixth. The hit batsman 
And then a little bloop from Polanco. Eight, nine hitters have not been retired tonight. Well, they've been doing all the damage. Four for four, a walk and a hit batsman. Again, playing with some fire here, and Craig Council's going to go ahead and make a move. And just one of those days for Hader. Just didn't have it. He couldn't find his slider. A lot of fastballs, and the Twins were able to make him work. High pitch count. That's it. So his night is done. Pitching change at Target Field. Twins with two runners on. Brewers a one-run lead. Ball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lights, the original light beer. That's First Avenue. Purple Rain Rock. It's where it all took place, oh, yeah. right here. Where yeah. it all started. Great song, great movie. It's where it all started, right there, First Avenue. It's your final nugget of knowledge in relation to the purple themed flight for the Brewers yesterday. Purple Rain, and now. Jeremy Jeffress is on the mound as we get back to business. Brewers in a little bind again. Josh Hader hitting Jason Castro and then giving up a single to Jorge Polanco. And now let's see what Jeffress can do. Yeah, came back to Milwaukee from Texas on Monday. He pitched on the 27th against the Cardinals. Two thirds scoreless, gave up a hit, a walk, and he punched that a batter. Is Brian Dozier looking for his first hit of the ball game, and he was showing bunt. He's got that power sinker. Does Jeremy Jeffress with that release point? Sinker, split change, and curveball for Jeremy. Awfully good last year before the trade to the Rangers, along with Jonathan Lucroy. Back into his comfort zone, he believes, back as a Brewer. 1-0 pitch. Those are lays one down. It'll roll foul. Got to be doing that on his own. I can't imagine Paul Mauder asking Dozier to sacrifice himself. One of the few power threats in his lineup. It really isn't something you see much in baseball. Yesterday, you wondered if the Brewers you know, would go that route with Manny Pena, but you don't, you don't see it that much in the game anymore with position players. Yeah, they just don't like to give up outs. No, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of data would tell you that first and second, nobody out. Your run probability is actually better than second and third with one out. Yeah. So this is popped up. Behind the plate, Sue Sack with a play. And there is out number one. Yeah, nice gift right there. That's that power sinker, 96 miles an hour. It took Sue Sack a little bit of time to find it, but he's able to make the catch in foul ground. Right, 
go with a uh, a matchup here in the sixth inning. That's what he does. It's one and done for Jeremy Jeffress. So he comes in and takes care of his business and another pitching change. It remains four or three Brewers with one out and two runners on for the Twins. With fast paced pickle and play action. Packed with all your favorite MLB teams, players, and ballparks. Get RBI Baseball today for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and mobile devices. Learn more at RBIGame.com. Some situation baseball going on here in inning number six. Jeremy Jeffress retires Brian Dozier on a foul pop. Two runners on, and now Oliver Drake is in to face Joe Mowry. You can see that uh, Drake much better against left handers than right handed batters. Look at the right handed batters batting average 362 as opposed to 248. You got Joe Mauer, the lefty, Grossman, the switch hitter, who will go up there and bat right handed. Great Council likes to use Drake because of that splitter against left handed hitters. Back-to-back -back switch hitters, in fact, mentioned Grossman, likewise Escobar. And here is Mauer. RBI ground ball in the third. Walked in the fifth. And Drake delivers a strike. You know, he can manipulate that splitter. Acts a lot like a screwball to lefties going down and away. Mauer's had his trouble against left-handers, but Drake a right-hander, but pitches like a lefty, right? If you will, correct, <laughs> correct, I should say. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes uh, tough to figure, but that's the way Craig likes to use him against lefties. Yeah, he, it's you know, with the one, the one lefty and hater, but Drake is like a second in many ways. You see what. Mauer has done as we look at it from his perspective in his career, including this year with the five home runs. That's all he has, and all five against right handed pitching. One and one the count. Interesting how the makeup of this Brewer is not just the uh, starting rotation, but the bullpen. How it is unfolded, and when you have a key closer in Corey Knebel. That's not how his season began. Oliver Drake, of course, acquired by the Brewers during the first road trip of the year. And they have Jeremy Jeffress back in the fold. Anthony Swarzak in the trade before the deadline for the White Sox. And some newer faces who have become. Key members of this Brewers pen and has this team in contention in the National League Central. 
Yeah, four guys that weren't on the roster on opening day. Fascinating how it has unfolded for this Brewers team this season. Come in five games better than 500 at 59 and 54. Twins just three under. Last year the Twins won 59 games all year. They won 53 to this point of 2017 for Paul Paul Molitor. Yeah, that last take right there by Mauer tells you why. Shows you why he doesn't strike out a whole lot. You know, Drake gets a lot of swings on that pitch. Not from Joe Maurer. He, along with the on deck hitter Robbie Grossman, they take a ton of pitches, and Maurer has worked Drake to a full count. Here it comes. In the air, left field. Braun will catch up to it. Second out of the inning. Another splitter, this one up in his own, and Mauer hit it to left. Braun able to run it down. Want to throw it for a strike? It was down the middle upstairs, and Joe Mauer, you know, power hitter, normally going to pull that ball. Mauer clearly not a power hitter, just goes to left with it and flies out. Two outs. Here's Robbie Grossman. That walk that he was issued in the first inning is the 59th for him this year. He leads the Twins team in that department. As mentioned, he and Mauer are both very, very good at working pitchers deep into counts. Just does not chase much at all. Castro, the runner at second. He was hit by a pitch. Polacco at first. He singled to right. Busy inning here for this Brewers bullpen. They have three deep right now, and uh, yeah, they started the game with eight out there in the pen. And they need them all. Eight's pretty much the norm these days in all of baseball. It is. Twins have eight. With a designated hitter, you only have three guys on your bench. Three position players. We'll see a few more of these guys tonight. Oh, and one the count to Grossman. In addition to the walk, he is grounded to second. Hit a fly ball to Braun and left. Twins have stranded seven runners so far tonight. Left them loaded in the sixth, as, or the fifth rather. I'd say either our uh, Fox Tracks is off tonight, or Bill Welke's having a miserable night behind home plate. I can't figure out which one it is. <laughs> he has missed a lot of pitches tonight, according to our Fox Tracks, including the last one. Yeah. Did not give Drake the high. A high strike, 2 1 pitch. A little blue left field. Braun on the run, and he'll make the catch. Inning over. Twins now have stranded nine. And we'll see Ryan Braun hitting third as the Brewers come calling. In inning number seven, it remains 4 3, Bill Walker.
The big story in baseball tonight, we go back to Nationals Park. Earlier, we told you about Bryce Harper's milestone home run. Well, how about John Carlos Stanton, who off of Max Scherzer in the sixth inning hit this home run, his 37th of the season. That ties a career high for Stanton. This is the third time in his career that he's hit 37, the last time in 2012 and also in 2014. So Stanton now has four home runs in four games and just continues to swing a hot bat for the Marlins. Yeah, he sure does, Sophia. Talked about faces of the game. He Gave us the, the info on uh, Bryce Harper, obviously, and Mike Trout. But if you're talking about faces of the game, you, you probably ought to have Giancarlo Stanton in there as well. Yeah, goodness. he has been uh, on a roll since the All-Star break. All right, new pitcher on for the Twins as they go to their bullpen. Trevor Hildenberger on in relief of Urban Santana. Yeah, good numbers for him and limited duty. 13 appearances and 279 earned run average. He's only allowed the one home run. This is his debut season in the big leagues. He will face Andrew Susak. You can see the challenge that the right handed hitters will have against Hildenberger. Susak, a pop up and a ground ball to third here tonight. Yeah, kind of a tough uh, arm angle for right handers. Kind of comes around and slings that baseball and coming in on an angle. Twenty six years old is Hildenberger out of Cal Berkeley. Twenty second round pick three years ago. Two balls one strike. Breaking news you're getting late in the game and it's one run a one run game again for Milwaukee it was new right <laughs> absolutely nothing Saturday night walked out of Tropicana Field so they crushed him three nothing <laughs> that is strike three called and Susak is out number one in the seven yeah, haven't seen that pitch called a whole lot tonight that pitch down in the strike zone but it was on the plate. Yep. That's a good pitch. One away back to the top of the order and Domingo Santana. Hit the right wrist yesterday and took one the left hand here tonight and staying in there this evening. One one. He out in front. Also grounded to seconds as well as a ground ball to third. One for two and hit by a pitch. That's the night so far at the plate for Domingo Santana. Here's the one two. It's back to back strikeouts. Two away here in inning number seven for the Brewers. They'll bring Ryan Braun to the plate. He's getting some things done. I mentioned he has some pretty good numbers against the Twins, and specifically at this venue at Target Field. Check it out. We're hitting 358. The double tonight. I'm hitting the ball hard, and tonight he's. Getting some hits out of it has been the case since the second half began. They have yet to retire him, and it stays that way as Braun goes back up the middle. So a double, two singles. He's also reached on an error, and Braun extends the seventh inning. Yeah, talking to Ryan you know, before the game about his bad luck, he turned around as he was heading into the cage and said they all even out. And he's right. I mean, that's a ground ball up the middle. They able to find a hole this time and another base hit. Three for him tonight. On the pitch middle in. Watch that front shoulder stays still doesn't budge. That's why he's able to get to that pitch. So a pitching change here is Hildenberger retires to gives up a single. Almometer goes to his bullpen for three Brewers in the seventh.
night. First game of the series with the Twins. Our game summary. Keon Broxton launching one 431 feet to get the scoring started for the Brewers. They add three more in inning number two. Keon Broxton having a strong night at the plate. RBI double here for Broxton. It scored Orlando Arcia. And the Twins battled back after Brent Suter retired the first two of the fourth inning. Four straight reached. Jorge Blanco driving home a pair with that double down the line. So that's where we are. And now we are in pitching change mode here. Both sides. Paul Molitor going to his bullpen and he goes to a lefty to face a lefty. Buddy Boshears is in. Yeah, his number is 24th appearance and end run average under four. He's got Travis Shaw to deal with. A good curveball. Yeah, Bell Shears last appeared on the fifth against Texas, two thirds scoreless. And he's been very good against lefties. He's retired 10 of the last 11 left handed hitters he has faced. Thus, the move made by Molitor. There's a couple of lefties, the other being Taylor Rogers there. Might be in a tag team closers role scenario here with the Twins these days after the Brandon Kinsler trade. Up and a right hander getting loose. 1 1 the count to Shaw. There's the right hander. If Travis Shaw reaches, you're probably going to see another pitching change. That's Ryan Presley getting loose. Aguilar is on deck so lefty versus lefty and maybe righty versus righty if Shaw can keep this inning going here for the crew and a ground ball right to Maurer at first and that will end the seventh inning. Stretch time at Target Field. Brewers hanging on leading four to three. As we head to the bottom of the seventh stretch time here at Target Field, no fans at Miller Park this coming Sunday, August 13th. We'll get a Bob Euchre eight ball featuring a variety of fun Eucharisms as the answers. This one of a kind fortune telling device comes to you courtesy of 620 WTMJ. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com. Oliver Drake stays in there here for the Brewers as we move to the bottom of the seventh. Suter went the first four, and then it's been Hader, Jeffress for one hitter. And Drake to finish up the sixth inning. He'll face Eduardo Escobar to begin the seventh. Escobar, a pop up to short, a liner to Braun, and a walk in the fifth inning. Game 
has turned into a grinder. Both Paul Molitor and Craig Council going into the bullpens now. Council had to go in early. Irvin Santana worked six for the Twins, gave up six hits, four runs, but two were unearned. Twins have committed three errors and they have stranded nine so far. Five in the last two innings. Two balls, one strike to Escobar. He'll be followed by Rosario and Byron Buxton. Trying to bunt, but a foul. Cardinals leading the Royals big on the ninth inning there in Kansas City, 11 2 St. Louis. Cubs an early lead over the Giants, 2 0 in the second. Vision races continuing. Nice to be right in the middle of it. Sure is. It's fun. Well, we talked about it in, in Tampa and probably before that. And you know, and BA will be discussing it after as well. They just see these games. The uh, Craig Council as a manager, you can grind through one in April and May, but for his young team. It's like hanging on every pitch if you're a Brewers fan here. And a team in the mix playing one close game after another. It's priceless experience for this team. Yeah. They want to go for it. Yeah, guys don't seem to be too affected by you know whatever you want to call it pressure or the pennant race or. Yeah, they have a pretty unique ability as young as they are and as inexperienced as they are more importantly in the major leagues. You're going to put all that stuff be beside him and just play baseball, have fun. 3 2 pitch, and Drake just walked Escobar to begin the seventh. And the walks are starting to become an issue for the Brew Crew here tonight. That's what, six of them? Yeah, four in the last two innings, or three innings, I should say. You get away with that for so long. Hater walks three in the fifth. Left him loaded, got a strike out of Adrianza. Hit batsman in the sixth. Now a walk issued by Drake in the seventh. Here's Eddie Rosario. And Rosario, someone with a little pop in the bat. Capable. He's hit 12 homers on the year. In fact, he hit three of them in a game in the middle of June against the Mariners. Went four for five, went deep three times, and drove in five. One and one the count. Yeah, he does have some pop in that bat. He's got 12 homers. Ahead of pace, he'll get you double digits. A couple of years ago, he had 13. Last year, he hit 10. Two years ago, led the American League with 15. Count them, 15 triples. Yeah. Two years ago, the Twins were a very competitive team. Last year, the wheels fell off very early. But they went into this season thinking that with the personnel they had, they could be. Closer to that 15 performance than what unraveled last year. That is hit well to right field, but Santana misplayed it. He broke in and sails over his head. Escobar rounding third. He'll head home, and this game is tied. Yeah, what happened there? Man. I completely misplayed that one. Yeah, so the leadoff wall comes around to score on a misplay out and right. Yeah, he thought it was going to be caught. It probably should have been if had Santana played it correctly. He goes in, should have gone back. Would have ended up being a relatively routine catch if he gets the right break on it. And the Twins tie it up. More importantly, they have the go ahead run at second base. 
will go down as a double. A run scoring double for Eddie Rosario. And now Byron Buxton settles in. He is singled and walked tonight. Shows bunt and takes ball one. The Twins have rallied from three down. Got behind five nothing early yesterday against the Rangers and rallied to win. The Brewers had two different three run leads in this game. This is fouled back. The fleet footed center fielder Byron Buxton. I mentioned he was a first round pick, and second overall in 2012. Lewis Brinson. We've seen him a little up at the big club back in Colorado Springs now. He also was a first round pick in that year's draft, 29th by the Rangers. Our infielders creeping in. Buxton again shows bunt, lays it down. Drake, the play is at first. The covering Ernan Perez, good bunt. And Byron Buxton, the go-ahead run now at third. Yeah, and you can't take your time feeling the bunt with that guy running. Able to drop it down nicely. Able to advance the base runner. Go ahead and run at third base. A walk and a misplay. And the Twins 90 feet away from taking the lead. Sacrifice bunts moving Rosario to third, and here's Adrianza. And a roll in that two run fourth, extending the inning against Brent Suter. Back to back two out singles, a walk, and then a two run double. This is popped up. Going back is Arcia. He'll make the catch for out number two. Huge out right there. Yep, on a split fingered fastball up and in. Not exactly where you want to leave a splitter in this spot, but it worked. Jammed him, got the out. Now, this is where the trouble has been all night for Minnesota. Those eight, nine hitters, neither Jason Castro nor Jorge Polanco, have been retired. You see Castro's night, Polanco on deck at a two run double in the fourth. A run across, and Rosario at third. A strike to Castro. Build process with the Astros. Signed with the Twins, likes what they're doing here, the direction this organization is going. Got himself a nice three year deal. One and one the count. Years with the Astros. One was an all-star season for Castro back in 2013. He hasn't been one who has hit for much of an average, but that season he did. He had a solid 276. His on-base percentage was 350. Also homered 18 times. Career high season for him four years ago. Two and one, Rosario the runner at third. A wave and a miss there. There's a good splitter right there. That's where you want it, down and away. One of the best he's thrown for a strike tonight. Perfect. It's one more of those. Twins have left nine runners aboard. Rosario really dancing off the bag here because the shift is on. Shaw is really more like a shortstop now, so Rosario can play that game. Yeah, he can go down halfway down. I mean, anything in the dirt, and you might see him try and take off. Really trying to mess it. He got it. He was messing with him. It worked. 
to get a block and he'll score. The Twins take the lead. Well, you just got to forget it. I mean, it got into his head. Balk was called by the third base umpire. I'm not sure if Bill Welke called it as well. I saw the third base umpire call it. Council is irate. Saying something about doing something and stepping off is not a balk, but first move has to be with the back foot to step off. If you flinch with the front leg and then step off, that's still a balk. Check it out. Watch him. Watch the front knee. That front knee right there. Did you yep, see it flinch? Yep, yep. That's a balk. Yeah, good catch. Yep. Rosario got done exactly what he was looking to get done. Front knee flinched and then he stepped off. Yep. Two run inning for Minnesota. Two and two. The count to Castro. Welke let Council say his piece. Arguments you don't see a whole lot of anymore in baseball. No. Three two. Yeah, when you step off, that has to be the first move. You step off, then you can do anything you want. You can stand on your head if you want. It's not a balk, but if you flinch that front knee, that's a balk automatically. And you can see it there that replays that he did did flinch just a little bit. Castro will lift one out of play. The twins now have the lead for the first time tonight. Who will be in catch up mode? Full count to Castro. And that is ball for another walk. They're really piling up here these last three innings. Still gotten an eight or nine hitter out Carlos Torres warming up. Castro has twice reached on walks hit by a pitch and singled and now Oliver Drake will deal with the ninth place hitter Jorge Polanco who is three for three tonight. Was up and down last year, four stints in fact with the Twins. A lot of time at shortstop for Molitor's team this season. And quickly Drake ahead 0-2. These guys are sitting all over the splitter. So that's why he's been able to get the two fastballs by him. Get the bottom of the order out. This has not happened for Brewers pitching tonight. Two strike pitch. Blanco won't chase. Drake trying to finish off Polanco here and. And not yet two and two the count. Five runs seven hits three errors for the twins four seven and oh for the Brewers but. A misplay out and right. Getting things rolling for the twins in this seventh inning. Two two. And that's going to shoot through a base hit Castro to second and the eight nine hitters. 
have been lethal here so far tonight. And Polanco four for four. My goodness. And here comes Craig Counts going to make a pitching change. Pitch count getting away from Drake, 38 of them. He's had Torres warming up. Torres is ready, and his bullpen having some struggles here tonight. Pitching in general having some struggles. Pitching change again. The Twins with a couple of runs in. They now lead five to four. Five to four. As once again, Craig Council forced to go to his bullpen as he will send Carlos Torres on to try to finish this seventh inning. Yeah, last pitched on the 27th against the Cardinals did not appear in a game against the Rays. Two scoreless innings, struck out three batters in the process. His numbers overall: 431 earned run average in appearance number 51. Top of the order here for the Twins and Brian Dozier. Castro at second, Polanco the runner at first. A hitless night so far for the second baseman. Twins have eight hits here in the game. This is a very high fly ball down the line and left. Runs out of room. I'm not sure if that fan reached out over the into the field of play or not. In the stands is different if you reach out into into the field of play. Could be an out call. Nope, it was in the stands. Barely. Yep, not by much at all. No Bartman. <laughs> oh, and one. Nice they gave Bartman a World Series ring. They did. He deserved it. Let's say that. Very classy gesture by the Cubs. I don't know if it provides closure, but at least from the Cubs' perspective, I think it does. This is hit in the air, center field. And that's Keon Broxton, and finally this seventh inning is over. But the walk starting to haunt the Brewers. A misplay out in right, and the Twins now have a five to four lead.
the seventh and now take a five to four lead as we head to the eighth here at Target Field in our game break. We go out to AT&T Park in San Francisco. Series between the Cubs and the Giants and Javi Baez got this one started right away in the second inning. He hits this deep fly ball. It goes off of the wall. That's Carlos Moncrief out in right field, runs it down. Jason Hayward comes in to score and Javi Baez showing off his wheels. He goes all the way around, slides into home. That's a two run inside the park home run for Javi Baez and the Cubs. They now have a three to nothing lead in that game. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. New pitcher on here for the Twins as Ryan Presley comes out of the bullpen. He'll face Aguilar, Thames, and Perez in the eighth. Yeah, the big earned run average. He's allowed seven home runs in 37 and a third innings. 36th appearance and a one and two record. Yeah, last pitch on the fifth. Score two scoreless innings against the Texas Rangers. Rule five selection by the Twins. Originally was drafted by the Red Sox. He'll face Jesus Aguilar. We're going back to uh, Sophia's uh, report to the Cubs. Uh, obviously a big moment for Baez. It is just stunning how bad the Giants have been. How badly they have struggled this season. They are 25 games under 500. There is Max Kepler in right field now for the Twins. Part of the uh, core group of young players they're excited about here. 24 year old Kepler 2 and 0 the count to Aguilar. Presley's had good command here these last several outings but he's behind to Aguilar 3 and 0. Brewers down a run as we hit the eighth inning. And that's a good start. Hadn't walked anybody in 19 and a third. That streak is over as Aguilar is on. Yep. Second walk issued by the Twins today. Thames walked back in the sixth. Well, lead off walk turned into two runs for the Twins. Bottom of the seventh inning. Pitch runner will come on here for the crew and we'll see Jonathan VR so we'll see what the Brewers have in mind regarding a running game. VR with 20 stolen bases on the years we caught seven times he got a thumper at the plate here in Eric Thames. Let's see if the Brewers can get something rolling. Scored three in the third, one more in the fourth. In addition to the walk, he's hit a couple of fly balls as Eric Thames, one to center, one to left. There's a ground ball over to third. Adrianza to Dozier for one on to first, and that's an around the horn double play. Yep, two seam fastball, and he hits it right at the defense, at the third baseman. The easy double play for Minnesota. That's some big movement by Presley on that pitch, going down and away. Fame stays on it, but the Twins had him positioned perfectly at third base. It's part of the game for Presley getting ground balls, and that's exactly what he got there. And here's Aaron Perez. Send one out of play. Presley bringing it up there at 97. Hard throwing right hander out of the bullpen for Molitor. 11th round pick of the Red Sox 10 years ago. Big league debut in 2013 for the Twins. Perez, that's hit well, right center field, but right there is Buxton. And that'll do it for the Brewers in the eighth. And Presley does his job. A walk gets a double play and a fly ball. Bottom of the eighth we go, 5 4, Minnesota.
five to four lead here in the bottom of the eighth and coming up after the game Brewers live brought to you by Ascension. We've got our guys Jeff Grayson and Jerry Augustine here on site and they'll take a look at what's gone on during the game. A controversial ball called on Oliver Drake there in the seventh allowed a run to score. Cam Broxton has had a good night at the plate with a home run and a double Ryan Braun on base each time as well. So we'll get comments from manager Craig Council. We'll get some reaction in the clubhouse and uh, Jeff Grayson and Jerry Augustine will break it all down for you coming up on Brewers live after the game. All right, Sophia, thanks. Bottom of the eighth, Carlos Torres staying in there for the Brewers. He faces Joe Maurer. Twins have rallied from a three-run deficit, grabbed the lead with a two-run seventh inning. Brewers pitchers have issued seven walks in this game. Including one to Maurer. The RBI was on a ground out in the third inning. First run of the game for Minnesota. Bouncing ball over to first, knocked down by Thames. He will scoop it over to Torres for out number one. Yeah, didn't panic, knew he had some time. And you know, isn't it interesting the way Torres, every time he covers first base? He tags the bag and then turns around like there's going to be a play at the plate or something. You know, there's <laughs> nobody right. on base. <laughs> Does it all the time. Have the habit, right? Just yeah. have it. Let it be natural. Right. <laughs> One away, and here is Max Kepler. There for Robbie Grossman. Germany spent a lot of time in the States love of the game growing when he would on summer vacations here and then the high school here was a part of the uh, MLB European Academy as well started to show promise for this twins club last year hit 14 homers. Pretty well documented by now the son of ballet dancers. One and two the count. Eleven homers he has driven in forty two. Buzzed him back. Torres, the fourth reliever out of the bullpen for the Brewers tonight. And Torres had this guy 0 and 2. Ran it to a full count. And here is that 3 2 pitch. Fouls it off his foot. Forward for Minnesota. Miguel Sano not in the lineup again tonight. Might have a lot of pop. Three two on the way. And Kepler slaps the ground ball to Thames and he will feed Torres for out number two. Let's check out what's on tap presented by Miller Lights. Second and final game here before the series moves. To Miller Park. Matt Garza on the mound for the crew. Alberto Mejia for the Twins. Get our coverage started here at Target Field at 6 30 at Fox Sports Wisconsin. Matt Garza has been pretty good. Had a two to one win last time out. Yeah, against Cardinals last Thursday. Yeah, five and two thirds, one run, only four hits. 
He pushed through. Was talking to reporters after the game. Said didn't maybe, maybe didn't have his best stuff, but he was able to push through and picked up a win. There is a fly ball hit back into right field. Santana calling for it. Now he gives way to Broxton. Always give way to the center fielder, and it's a one-two-three inning. Now well, the Brewers have another shot, a last shot. They'll face Matt Belisle as we move to the ninth. Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Let the games begin. Move to the ninth inning. Brewers need one to tie, two to grab the lead. Twins with a two run seventh. That's been the difference. Let's get to our Badger Mutual Insurance play of the game. Eddie Rosario dancing off the bag, trying to mess with Oliver Drake. A ball was called. The council didn't like it, but that. Front knee, Rock, as you pointed out. Yeah, it flinched. You can see it right there. That was the best shot of it behind home plate. Unfortunate way to lose the lead. Right, council argued. Bill Welke let Council say what he had to say. And unfortunately, nothing changed. The run was in 5 4, and let's see what the Brewers can do about it with Orlando Arcia at the plate against Matt Belisle. Matt Belisle. Got one save on the season. Been that kind of year for Minnesota. You can see his numbers four and a half earned run average. Not a big strikeout guy. And that save was yesterday against the Rangers in just the sixth of his career. They they got a tag team it now with Brandon Kinsler being moved to the Nats. Your Belisle against right handers if they need a lefty they have Taylor Rogers. And that's how they're going to work it. For now, pitch to Arcia, swing and a miss. And a big curveball, only 71 miles an hour. I don't see many guys close games with the big curveball, especially that slow. 37-year-old Matt Belisle. A ball, two strikes to Arcia. Here it comes. Looking for his first hit tonight, he had five of them in the series against the Rays. Been all, been all breaking pitches to Arcia in this at bat so far. Sliders and curveballs. Again, the one two that is hit in the air to right field, right to Max Kepler for out number one. There's Keon 
Watson. Had a good night at the plate trying to make it better here in the ninth. As Homer doubled, has driven in a couple. Took a called third strike in the sixth inning. Richard Belisle with his first save yesterday, six in his career. Manny Pena moving into the on deck circle. See if uh, Belial can hang one of these curveballs up there for Keon. Wants one out of here, 431 feet in the third inning. Let's take it back. Slider from Santana. See you later. Brewers on the board first. They have a three to nothing lead early. One and one the count to Broxton. Right. Slow curve and Keon well ahead of it. One and two. Low 70s with that pitch. No saves Belial has ever had in a season it was three. That was with the Rockies five years ago. One two pitch curve is chopped foul. 2012 season with the Rockies, Belial appeared in 80 games, most in the National League. As a starter briefly in his career, 10 years ago with the Reds, had 30 starts with Cincinnati. With the Nationals last year. One and two to Broxton. Tries a fastball. Brewers led three nothing, led four to one. And the Twins chipped away. Two runs in the fourth, two in the seventh. Strike three, call. Brewers down to their final out. Had him looking for a breaking pitch. I don't blame him, but that pitch right on the corner. Fooled him with a fastball. Those calls sometimes, sometimes not tonight. Lyle got it there at a key moment. And now Manny Pena. Will pinch hit for Andrew Susak. And there's a liner into left center field, and that will drop a base hit. And it gets by Buxton, and that'll allow Pena to move to second. Buxton could not gather it, and the tying run is at second. Yeah, I think if he catches that baseball in the hop, he's going to keep Pena at first base. That was a big bobble out there in center. He's had his issues out there in center field. Slider first pitch. Pena looking for it. Drills it out there into the gap. And watch Buxton. He drops it here if he catches it. I don't think Pena goes to second base. It might have been close. Yeah, he was thinking about stopping, but he saw the bobble. Single E8. That's the ruling. Four errors tonight committed by the Twins. And now Domingo Santana with a chance to make the Twins pay. Brewers down a run, two outs in the ninth. And Santana takes a strike. Hit by a pitch, couple of ground balls. He struck out in the seventh inning. Lyle ready with a one strike pitch. Big swing and a miss. Their final 
ball strike. Talked about the Brewers struggles with runners in scoring position. Well Santana has shined in moments like this. But he is in a two strike hole against the veteran Matt Belial. Danny Pena the runner at second. Belial trying to get his second save in as many games. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Yeah, that was your hanger right there. That ball, you can see where that one ended up, right down the middle. That was the one. That was your hanger right there. He knew it. And Delisle got away with one. Let's see if Santana gets another one. There's Pena. He singled and then advanced on the air. Charge to Buxton. Twins have committed a season high four errors tonight. No balls, two strikes to Santana. This is where inexperience comes in if you've never closed before. You haven't done it a whole lot. Last line of defense. Different animal altogether. Is he going to make a mistake? One and two to Domingo Santana. And here it comes. Sharply hit. Adrianza at third. And the Twins take the opener. They commit four errors, but they rally from three down. To defeat the Brewers in the opener of this series. Matt Belial with his second save in as many games. The Brewers scored early, but then held in check from there as Minnesota wins this opener 5 to 4. Let's send it to Jeff Grayson standing by with Brewers Live Post Game. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Uh, Balk breaks the tie. Coming up on Brewers Live, presented by Ascension. We'll look at that heated play. Good game for Keon and Ryan. We'll hear from Craig Council and look ahead to game two at Target Field.